This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at FBHP.com. I'm Mike Keith with Titans Radio's draft duo, Rhett Bryan and Coach Dave McGinnis, as we take you through their top five at various positions leading into next week's NFL draft. Our first OTP with these two, the top five quarterbacks and running backs. Today, we hit defensive backs. Rhett Bryan, I think we have to start at the corner position, don't you? I think we do. And the top five goes like this. At number five, Kool-Aid McKinstry, Alabama. Number four, Cooper DeGean, Iowa. Number three, Nate Wiggins, Clemson. Number two, Quinion Mitchell, Toledo. And number one, Terry and Arnold, Alabama. All right. Arnold has elevated through this entire process. Coach Dave McGinnis, why is Terry on Arnold at the top of the list? Big time producer in the Southeastern Conference. Very nuanced player. Very nuanced player. He's not a, he's he's not a four three guy, but the the guy is sticky. He's in phase. He understands. He understands not only vision to the quarterback. He understands transition on throws. He's never hesitant. You can tell that he really understands and gets the game. He's he's really good at the catch point, really good at the catch point, holds his water, doesn't panic when the ball's over his head, and, and he's in phase with the receiver. Uh, I, just, I just think he's more of a nuanced corner because of where he's been. And I will say this, and I know he's retired, but, you know, Nick Saban coaches the corners at Alabama. He coaches the corners at Alabama, and Nick Saban knows what he's doing. You can see it in the technical work. I and mean, we've got two Alabama corners, you know, in our top five. And I think that not only the physical ability, but they've learned the game at a really high level. Mike, Terry and Arnold is ahead of his teammate Kool-Aid McKinstry in a lot of people's eyes because he was brought in at safety, worked at safety, moved to corner. And you look at his immeasurables, Mike, He's 5'11", 189, 4'5", in the 40, arms 31 and 5'8". So he's a longer prospect. 76 and a quarter inches is his wing. And you know who else had that same kind of track and has those same kind of numbers coming out? The guy that the Titans just traded for, Legereus Sneed. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of – if there's a comp, that's kind of the comp. We saw Quinion Mitchell play at the Senior Bowl. Corner from Toledo, originally from the state of Florida. And you think, well, he's a MAC player. And Mac football is good football, but they don't generally have the top end receivers, say, that the SEC or the Big Ten did. And then we always saw Mitchell do in Mobile is shut everybody down. He just beat everybody up. You're 100% right. And we're sitting up there watching, going, this kid is, you know, and, and I, I didn't know a lot about him. I knew, I knew about him, but not digging in on him before we went there. Uh, I, I, think, I think he, we talk about Jalen Wright you know, earlier. In, in our in our first draft program about elevating himself in this in this uh, pre-draft process, Kenyon Mitchell. Kenyon Mitchell will be number one on a lot of people's cornerback board. He really will. And when you watch him and you look at him, you see you, you see really what you see is someone that, that has got tremendous athletic ability. Four three three, a one five one ten, thirty eight vertical jump, a, a ten two broad, twenty reps at two twenty five. Now for a cornerback, that's pretty salty. And, and he plays like that. This guy, to me, is – you talk about, you talk about a, a really good floor to work from, but a, a ceiling that's going to be very, very high. And he will be able to progress as he's taught in this league and learns how to play against, as you brought up, more nuanced receivers. But uh, he opened my eyes at that senior bowl. Mike, there might not be another player, regardless of position, who have, has helped themselves and has won this pre-draft process – more than Quinion Mitchell. There's a lot of talk coming in to Mobile that he might be a first-round pick, and now most of the analysts think he is an upper half of the first-round pick. Yeah, it would not surprise me at all. Uh, I do believe he's a Thursday night first-round pick, and I think it's going to be pretty early on. DeGene from Iowa. Oh. Just had a great individual workout. I mean, a player with – a big skill set, state long jump champion 
averaged 25 points a game in basketball in high school. I mean, the, the measurables, the traits, whatever you want to call it, are there. Does that translate to the field when I was out there playing defense? In spades, it does. I mean, and let's, let's talk about Iowa defensive backs a little bit. Their coach, Coach Parker, is, is probably the guru of defensive back coaches in the collegiate game. Wow. The guru. He's been there for 25, 30 years. These guys come out of there so well-versed on what it takes, not only ability-wise, but the mind and the thought process of what it takes to play in the secondary. You can just tell they are nuanced. We've got a safety here right now that, that came from there. We could tell that. In that draft, you remember when you know when, when we had him. In fact, we had Kirk. Amani Hooker. Yeah, and in fact, we had Kirk Ferentz on after the draft, and he said the same thing. But they are so well schooled in, in in what it takes to be a secondary, and then you you couple that with what he's got. You already mentioned. I mean, he's six foot and a half, two oh three, uh, broke his fibula in November. So to your point, he's just coming off of that, but was cleared for his for his activity. This guy is everything, and here's and I say everything. In this aspect, he's got the mental capacity to do it. He is so position and scheme versatile. You can play this guy anywhere. And when I say anywhere, you can you can drop him down. He can play an overhang position up up at the second level. He can play safety. He can he can do it. Or you could put him out there on a corner, and he's got the hips to be able to play corner. I, this is a really really good football player. And when I say that, it's with huge, huge uh, lights on as a football player that I think is a can't miss in this league. He may be one of the top five position versatile players in this draft. You could literally, I mean, whatever Iowa runs, it's kind of like a star position or whatever, and the guy can do it all. And came back and ran a, what, a 4 4 40 and a 38 and a half inch vertical? Yeah. All five of these players in your cornerback listing, do they go in the first round, Rhett? Uh, I'm going to say probably three of the five go in the first round. Wow, okay. Terry and Arnold, Quinion Mitchell, Cooper DeGene, probably now that he's tested some. And it's still – Nate Wiggins could still be there. Uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry had uh, – foot surgery after he ran his 40 at his pro day and is supposed to be ready for uh, training camp. So we'll see about that. But I, I, I would say safely three of the five will be drafted in the first round. Yeah. And I, and I think that there'll be, there'll be a, there'll be a gap as to when they're taken, but I think Nate Wiggins can go just from the fact he's, he's slight 173, 175 pounds, but he ran four two eight. You know, and God doesn't make many of those people, and especially if, if you're going to have a defense that, 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 that matches some people up with a 36-inch vertical, not very physical, not very physical, but 4-2-8 with the way the space game is now. I would think he and Kool-Aid McKinstry will go in the lower third, the lower third of the first round. Ennis Rakestraw from Missouri, was he in contention for your top five? Yes, right there. And so he figures to be a player – Probably early in night two. That oh, would be I, I would think very early, if not somebody. Somebody may tag him at the end of the first round, just because the number of draft picks that they have and the need that they have back there in the secondary. But absolutely, he does. He's a good player. He's a good player. I think what you're getting to though is if the Titans wanted to go corner at 38, they could get an outstanding player potentially. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's yes. another guy who's not on our list. I mean, there's a guy, at, you know, at, at Iowa State, T.J. Tampa, that, that, that to me is – I mean, there's this – the run on corners I think will carry on through maybe the top of the fourth round. Who is T.J. Tampa with the cool name? Got some, got some, got some length to him. Got some, got, some, got some length to him. Is a guy that, that has proven that he's got the hips to be able to, to, to match and play. And he's just a very, very cerebral guy in the back end. Almost 79-inch wing on that guy. Oh, you like that? Yeah, buddy. All right, so let's talk about favorites. Coach Mack, outside of the top five, your favorite is? Max Melton. Okay. From Rutgers. Your favorite interview. I love that guy. I know you do. So I, I did that for Max, but I'm glad you like it. 5'11", 187. The, the guy is just a bulldog. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, and when I say that, I mean, he is tenacious. He's a tenacious player. He's physically gifted, 40-and-a-half-inch vertical jump, an 11'4 broad jump. I mean that that that, that and a four three nine forty. He's compact, 
but you interviewed him and, and the way that he interviewed with you, the way you explained it to us when we were down in, in, in Mobile, it's the way he plays. He ain't scared. <laughs> <laughs> I think what you said is, Coach Mack, this guy could be a WWE wrestler. Oh, he could. <laughs> But I, I mean, he's Max Melton too. That rolls right that off. Rolls the right off. The, yeah. But he ain't scared, Rhett. I mean, that's that's what you love in corners. Is I mean, they're going to have it's tough gonna days. It's going to be a war every day. Every they're going to go against world class athletes at wide receiver, and this guy just doesn't care. Yep. I think you you were spot on, and you came back immediately from that interview and said, "This guy's got it." All right. Inside. All right, Rhett Brian, who's your favorite? Cam Hart, Notre Dame. Who is Cam Hart? So he is a. Pretty large cornerback. Notre Dame, 6'3", 202, 4540, 33-inch vertical. He's got almost a 79-inch wingspan. And, you know, there's some ups and downs uh, to any of these guys. But if you want to see what he can do, take a look at the Ohio State film. He held Marvin Harrison Jr. to three catches for 32 yards. No touchdowns. So... I just he's a bigger corner, and it, obviously he's somebody that's a day three prospect, but uh, could make a nice addition to someone's team. Rep Bryant, who's your sleeper? My sleeper is Andrew Phillips from Kentucky. Really like Andrew Phillips. He is five uh, ten and a half, one ninety. Ran a four four eight in the forty. Uh, Thirty one and a quarter inch arms. Um, so uh, the thing about him, and obviously SEC corner in this but his game is a lot like Roger McCrary okay that would be his comp if we're talking about him I think he's gonna make somebody a nice nice pro uh really nice young player thing I like about him though just jumping in on Rhett's guy he's got a 42 inch vertical and 11 and 3 broad so he's an explosive yep he's an explosive dude and and you need explosion on your transition out of your back pedal. He's got it. All right, Coach Mack, you said that your favorite is Max Melton. So who's your sleeper at corner? Abram Strain. Okay. The other corner Missouri. from Missouri. From Missouri. 5'11", 179, not, not, not quite as big. A 4'4", 440, 33-inch uh, 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 vertical jump, but a 1'5", 3'10". This guy's just – he's an instinctive football player. And even at that, even at that weight, 179, he will throw his face in the briar patch. I mean, he'll go, he'll he will go after you. And Missouri had a really good football team this year in the Southeastern Conference. There were a lot of Missouri players at the combine for a reason. Uh, this guy's a good football player, and I think later on down in the draft, somebody's going to get a pretty good player there. I, I think he'll make a living in this league as a slot corner. All right, that was corners. Safety's coming up next after we tell you about Seat Geek the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans, whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans, so Titans fans can fan. Rhett Bryan, take us through the top five safeties as you and Coach Mack have them rated. At number five, Cole Bishop, Utah. Number four, Kalen Bullock, Southern Cal. Number three, Jaden Hicks, Washington State. Number two, Javon Bullard, Georgia. And number one, Tyler Newbin, Minnesota. I want to talk about Bullard first. Yeah. Javon Bullard, Georgia. Who is this player and why is he special? First of all, he is very, very cognizant of what goes on in space. You can play, you can play him anywhere back there. He can lap in the, in the back end. He's really good at driving the football, and he, he, he's not – if when you're watching tape, the first thing you want to look at at safeties, how frantic are they when the ball is snapped? You know what I'm saying? How frantic are they? Do they look confused? Do they look – this guy is so dialed in to what's going on. The other thing is, I mean, when you, you, he's a 448-40 guy, a 33-inch vertical jump, a 10-foot broad jump, but he understands the nuances of what's happening in space and not only what's happening in his vertical vision, but also in his perif. He's really good at periffing what's going on, too. That is a, 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 a trait that your good safeties have to have because it happens back there so quick and stuff is on him so fast. I just like the way he recognizes things that are happening from the back end forward. Certain players from certain schools at certain positions get my attention more, Coach Mack. You mentioned the Alabama corners because Nick Saban coaches the corners. 
Well, guess what Kirby Smart played <laughs> exactly. at Georgia? He was a safety. So if there's ever a Georgia safety out there, I, my interest is peaked. Well, you know what, and that's such a great point, Mike. And and, and that's I mean that that's dialed in because you got Javon Bullard sitting back here at five ten and a half, one ninety eight, four four seven forty. I mean, and the point that you make, a lot a lot of the instructions that these guys get coming up can either be way advantageous, or they can be a deficit. You know, of bad habits that you have to break. To your point, you're not going to have to break a whole lot of bad habits with safeties out of Georgia. All right. Who is Tyler Newbin, your number one rated safety in this list, Rhett Brian? Tyler Newbin is 6'1", 205. So good size. Good size. Uh, wing, he's a long player. Arms 32 inches. So his wing's 77 and a half inches. At his pro day, 4'5", 9 and a 40. Uh, 31 and a half inch vertical leap, 10 foot broad, uh, short shuttle and three cone drill good. Um, and led uh, his team in INTs in uh, the last couple of years there at Minnesota. Uh, he's a nice player. So, Coach Mack, to you, who is Tyler Newbin from Minnesota? Tyler Newbin's a guy that just gets the game. He understands the game. A safety, that's big for a safety, Mike. They have to understand the game of what's going on in front of them. He is, he's very nuanced in, in what he understands. He's not the best athlete of this group as far as just numbers-wise. But when you watch him play, you, you see that he's got a sense of what's going on and then also, he always is in the right place. And a safety has to be in the right place. He's a good tackler. He's a good tackler. And if they ever break through uh, from the front back there to him, he'll get them on the ground. But I just I like the way he plays the game. And I don't know the kid, but I think just watching him, I like the way he sees the game from the back end. All right, let's talk about favorites for you two outside of your top five safeties. Coach Mack, give me a favorite – in this safety class for the 2024 draft? I like uh, Cameron Kinchins from Miami of Florida. Cameron Kinchins from Miami of Florida, 5'11", 203, uh, you know, 46540, uh, but a 15910, 35-inch vertical jump, 92 broad jump. This is a guy that I think later on down in the down in you know down in the draft, there's going to be a run on these. He'll be I think he'll probably be taken in the probably third or fourth round. Wow, okay. But but that there's there's something to his game that uh, I mean I like his game because again when I look at safeties I look at guys that are cognizant of what's going on you know and, and I look at guys that don't take false steps I look at guys that got really really good eyes you know guys that that don't panic that I, I, I like this guy Rep Brian who is your favorite at the safety position mine is Malik Mustafa from Wake Forest two year starter there I'm talking about a guy that had 192 tackles 15 of those for loss four quarterback sacks four four fumbles. 10 pass breakups, three INTs, not scared of contact at all. Um, and he has experience as a gunner and a regular on the kick coverage team. Those are super things you need. And he's round three, round four guy. All right. Sleeper at the safety position, Rep. Brian. Sione Vaki from Utah. He's a guy that you must kind of pay attention to. Was he a senior bowl guy, too? Yes. Yes, he was. I thought he, he was. He was there, Mike. And he showed up time and time and time again. You're like, who is this dude? And his team, Cole Bishop, who was your number five safety, also made plays. But I thought Vaki might have been more impressive in terms of the on-field stuff. Well, first of all, Utah had a really good defense. Yeah. Yeah. And then they got two safeties that are in this draft that will be drafted. That's a good start. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Yoni Vaki – uh, 5'11", 210, had a 4'6", 240, but a 39-and-a-half-inch vertical leap, 10-and-a-half-foot broad. So the explosion is there. Three-cone drill, short shuttle, good. He was one of those guys I thought won the week at the mm -hmm. Senior Bowl at his position. The other thing about him, let me add on Rhett's guy, he did 20 reps at 225. Yeah. So he stacked in there. And what you saw a little bit at the Senior Bowl. Coach Mack, who is your sleeper at the safety position? From Lubbock, Texas. Go West Texas. Okay. Dadrian Taylor Demerson from Texas Tech. 5'10, 197, uh, 44140, 38 inch vertical, 10 3 broad jump. I think this is a guy that uh, once he gets 
even more coaching in the National Football League is going to be a guy just because of his physical gifts that's going to be somebody you're going to like. He's going to you're, he's going to be immediate help on teams, you know, because of his length and also you know because of his speed. Uh, this guy to me will probably be a fourth safety when he when he comes into the league and will I think quickly be able to accelerate because he's got everything that it takes. Right now, you know, you know, playing there, playing there in the, in the Big Twelve, there's you know there there's not a whole lot of run support stuff that they have to do, and so he's kind of back there in space. But just once he gets into his movement skills and he's got length, I like safeties that have got a little length to them. If I'm going down later on in the draft to look at traits, we talk about traits later on in the draft. 38 vertical, 10-3 broad, you know it's there. No safeties in the first round. Safe to say, uh, no safeties in the first round. Would you say that like running backs, safety is a position that you could do very well on day three in the 2024 NFL draft? I believe that. I absolutely believe that. Great quality in terms of that maybe fifth, sixth, seventh round, maybe even undrafted. Yes, there could be undrafted guys that can help you. And again, just an example, you know, like uh, Malik Mustafa that I mentioned uh, there's some of these guys that they're core special teams guys, which is what you need anyway. And that's what you need if you're going to, especially if you're a free agent, but if you're on the back end of the draft in round six, seven, you're going to be asked to do those kinds of Here's things. Here's the other thing, uh, Mike and Rhett, that's very important. And once you start looking at going into that third day, the thing that you look at when you're looking at your board, you're looking at how many numbers you have per position for training camp. Mm -hmm. And you always, you want to take at least 15 DBs total to training camp. Because these guys are running all the time. There's going to be pulls. There's going to be, you know, ins and outs. But you want to be able to, to fill uh, and, and with your seventh-round picks. Sometimes instead of staying out of the Wild West show that free agency is, you know, once you start going the boiler room with the phone calls, you take a seventh-round pick on a guy that can, that can help you there because those are big numbers that you have to fill out. In the secondary and also on the offensive line, you need numbers when you go into training camp with those people. That's why you'll see, especially towards the end of that – or the middle or the end of that third day, people will start looking at their boards, looking at what they've got coming to training camp, saying, we need numbers here. Give me, let's, let's get them ranked, A, B, C, and D up here. And if we can save ourselves from having to negotiate – because all of a sudden, when you start negotiating, all of their agents think they're number one picks. Right. Okay, so that saves you. The thing about the safety position, too, which I think is important, is if you're evaluating it towards the active roster, I think you're looking at it more towards, can this guy be on our 48, not just our 53? Because unless you have an injury, you don't normally see a safety who is a healthy scratch. You want all those get those guys have to be up on game day, which Rhett makes the teams thing all the more important at the safety spot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You guys are pretty good at this. Come back and do it again on Monday. Really good, fair to Midland. Would you come back again? Would you? Do you think you could make it by? What did what did Rhett say on the text chain that you sent that time when you asked the, the, for the first day if we could do it? His his reply was no, no, I'm busy. Yeah, no, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to get you back on Monday for another OTP to do defensive linemen and linebackers. For Coach Mack and Rep Brian, I'm Mike Keith, thanking you for joining us for the OTP. Welcome to the big show where the legends go. Everybody knows it's our